For two years, Lebanon has been stuck. No president, no parliamentary elections, and a looming refugee and unemployment crisis plaguing the small Middle Eastern nation. But now there is a new president. Will he bring about major change? Here now to explain Lebanon's current situation and what the future looks like, CCTV's Yumna Nofal joins us from Beirut. And Yumna, Lebanon has greeted its new president, Michel Owen, after more than two years without one. Uh, why has the government left this vacancy unfilled for so long? Well, Anand, that's a, that's a pretty good question because for the last two years and a half, the simple answer is that the, the parliament, the members of parliament that vote for a president in Lebanon, because we have to remember that Lebanon elects a president in an indirect way. It's members of parliament that get to elect a president that serves for, six, for a six-year term. Now, up until October 31st, which is when uh, Michel Aoun was elected, the members of parliament could not agree on a candidate uh, to nominate before they could even elect. So the way it works is that usually um, the, the president, with the person who gets to be president, gets the majority of the votes and all members of parliament must be present. But members of parliament from different political parties, uh, opposing political parties couldn't agree on a candidate. Uh, the reasons being uh, they couldn't agree on uh, issues like the Syrian refugee crisis, the economy, uh, the Syrian uh, war, and basically what ended up happening is at the end, I think Lebanon had reached a tipping point, and what used to be formal rivals, which is the form former Prime Minister Saad Hariri, the head of the future movement, and Michel Aoun, the head of the Free Patriotic Movement, and which is also an important Christian figure, uh, finally got together after years of uh, differing on different issues and said, well, I, Hariri pledged to vote for Aoun if Aoun accepted to nominate Hariri as a prime minister designate. And that's exactly what happened. Today, uh, Saad Hariri is prime minister designate. He's forming a government. And that is basically what ended the political vacuum. Now, we have to remember that Lebanon went through 15 years of civil war and at the end of the civil war in 1990 uh, they all Lebanese officials that had uh, that had just ended the war met in Taif in Saudi Arabia and agreed on what is called the Taif agreement which basically stipulates that the prime minister of Lebanon must be Sunni the speaker of parliament Shia and the president a Maronite Christian and the reason was they wanted to make sure because Lebanon is a multi-religious country and they wanted to make sure that something like the Civil War could never happen again and that's exactly what ended up uh, finishing the vacuum. Right and you know this comes at a time when the country is facing a very high unemployment rate there's also a growing refugee crisis people from Syria continue to spill across the borders what's the outlook? Well after electing, after a two year and a half vacuum, the outlook right now is looking pretty positive. I mean, the Lebanese people are hopeful, even the officials are hopeful. Uh, as I told you, it reached a tipping point. I mean, we are currently facing an, an extremely uh, dangerous refugee crisis just because we have, Lebanon has, the highest refugee per capita, one in, in any country in the world. One in every three people is a refugee in this country. And so the president, in his first speech as president, said and pledged that he would make sure that the Syrian refugee would return home safely. But that poses a big problem because a lot of the refugees fled, not just because of the war, but also because a lot of them are anti-regime, anti-Bashar al-Assad, which is the president of Syria. And they, they fear that if they come back, they'll, they go back, they'll be captured. Um, executed so it poses a big problem but on another scale in terms of the economy in terms of foreign investments in terms of tourism uh, we're hopeful that hopefully it will pick up now that there is uh, stability now that the regional powers also in the Middle East seem to want Lebanon to be the stable field when all countries around it uh, seem to lack that thanks Yumna that's CCTV correspondent Yumna Nofal talking to us from Beirut.